Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Board Gems, my weekly video series in which I highlight an older game and point out some of the good things about it, maybe reasons we should still be playing this game. Old games don't stop being good just because new games come out, okay? Now this week, the game is Avanti. Now this is published by Zoc and was designed by Heinz Meister. Now that's not a game designer whose name a lot of English hobbyists may be familiar with. He designs a lot of children's games and a lot of family games, of which this would definitely qualify as a family game. You'll see his name pop up in a future video um, because there's another game of his that I, I quite like. Now, this is for ages uh, 10 and up, according to the box. Eight and up can play it as long as it's taught well. Uh, it's for three to five players and takes 45 minutes to an hour to play. I would say its length is probably its biggest knock. Um, Hour-long games are relatively common, especially for the higher player counts, which is what you want. The more players, generally, the better. The game is ostensibly about being a vendor at rock concerts, driving from concert to concert, bringing your goods and selling them. That theme, that setting, is not reflected in the game mechanisms at all. There's this big disconnect between the setting and the mechanisms, which actually makes it a tiny bit challenging to learn, at least for me, when I was reading the rules. Um, so forget about that theme. Uh, just focus on how it plays. Um, the game is a racing game that has a money financial part to it. You want to do well in the races, but you also want to make money, or at least not lose too much money. Uh, if you win races, you're going to advance upon a, along a victory point track. Uh, but if you make money, you can also buy your way along that track. So it's kind of two things to keep in mind there. So I'm going to show you how it plays first. And then afterwards, I'll talk about why it uh, might be a board gem. To set up the game, set up the board between the players. Each player gets one vehicle of their color that they choose. One pawn, which will start on the start space here. This is the victory point track. And one card showing the color that they're playing as. And you'll keep that face up in front of you. Pick a start player. The start player is going to pick any space on this circuit to be the start and finish line. If it's your first game, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter a whole lot. Just pick any space on the board and put the black marker next to it. And then all players are going to line up their vehicles on that space. There's this money. There's a kind of odd denominations, 100, 200, 300, 400. It's just to make payouts easier. Um, they match the numbers on the outside of these spaces. You're going to give each player two bills of each denomination, of each color, as their starting capital. Now, players are going to run a number of races. At the end of each race, players are going to progress along this victory track based on how well they did in the race. But they'll also be able to buy progress on this path. That's what these numbers are. If they're able to make money, then they can pay that money to move forward on that track as well. So while you're trying to do well in the race, you're also trying to make money or at least not lose too much money. One race, is from the black marker to the black marker. So we're gonna start here and it's gonna be one complete circuit. And then when a player passes the black marker, uh, then that's one complete lap and then the race is over. And you're gonna play a number of races. At the start of each race, you're going to shuffle up these cards. These are triangular cards. They're actually very, very hard to shuffle. I, I can't do it. I can't overhand shuffle these very well. Uh, the cards show three numbers on them, numbered one to seven. You'll notice the numbers one, two, and three are yellow. Anything above a three is red. I'll explain what that means later. But you're gonna shuffle those up. You're, gonna, you're going to give each player three cards to start. Now at the start of every race, the player who goes first is going to be the player who won the previous race. Or of course, for the first race, it's gonna be whomever the start player is. The start player is going to pick one of their cards and they're going to pick a number on that card. 
So let's say a three, for example. And they're gonna take this card and they're going to secretly, all the players are doing this at the same time. They're going to secretly take this card and they're going to put it face down in front of them with the number they want to play pointing toward the board. That's to prevent cheating, either deliberate or accidental. Otherwise I could do this when my turn comes and play a different number. Just when you're, it's your turn to reveal, you're going to take this card and you're going to flip it over so the point is pointing the same direction. So all players are going to pick a card and pick the number on the card and point it toward the board face down. And then starting with the start player and going clockwise, each player will take turns revealing their card. Player reveals their card and moves forward that many spaces, like so. If a player plays a number and when they move on to that space, it's occupied, they actually get to jump ahead that same number of spaces. So if red also played a three, red would move another three. And in the case of green, let's say green was the next player in clockwise order. If green play also played a three, then green would end up here. If you played a one, two, or three, so a yellow number, you get to draw a replacement card. This is where the draw pile should be. You're gonna draw a replacement card and put it back into your hand. If you played a red number, four through seven, you do not draw a replacement. So it's actually possible to run out of cards during the race. If that happens, then you'll just take your car and turn it sideways to show that you're out, and you're still considered to be in that position for, for most uh, game uh, situations. So after all players have played their card, let's say it looks something like this. Now that's one complete round, and now the player who's in the lead is going to get paid by the player's trailing. Each player who's not in the lead has to pay the leader the amount of money shown on their space. So red has to pay a whopping $1,000 to green. Blue has to pay 500. But you'll notice these numbers are on the outside of the track. There's no number here. This is a parking space. I call it free parking because when you're landing on that space, it's free. You don't have to pay any money to the leader if you're on one of these spaces. When your turn comes around, if you don't want to play the number you've already played, you can actually voluntarily back out. Maybe you see that you're, you're on a, a cheap space, say the 100, and this round is about to end and the number you, you uh, played, you're gonna end up on a thousand and you're gonna pay a lot of money. You can actually choose to retire from the race. You do this when your turn comes, instead of revealing your card, you just discard it and you just turn your car sideways and you say, I'm out. And you're still considered to be in the race for the purpose of determining like who the leader is. So for example, if you retire in the lead, you may still get money from players trailing you, but obviously uh, you won't win. <laughs> players will eventually pass you until they reach uh, the finish line. So that's one round. Now the race has not finished, the race will finish when players reach the uh, do one complete lap. So you're going to go again. So any player who played a yellow number, so a low number, one to three, gets to draw a replacement card. Don't forget that. But anybody who played a higher number does not get to. And you're going to start the next round with the player in last place, but again, going clockwise. It's not going to be yellow and blue and red. It's going to be yellow and then whoever is the player to her left and then the player to his left and so on. So yellow in this position now knows exactly where everybody's going to be. So yellow could play a card to make sure that they can leap ahead. They can see green is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if yellow had a six and was able to play a six, yellow could end up here, which is not bad. Not a bad move for yellow at all. But of course, the other players may be thinking, oh, I bet yellow is going to do that. And so if I play a card, maybe I can, I can get there too. So you can do kind of fun things like that. Suppose it looks like this at the end of a one complete round. Red would owe green $1,000, but suppose red doesn't have 1,000. Suppose red only has 800. In this case, red would have to move backwards one space on this track, and red gets paid out half the amount that they were on. So if they were on 1,000, 
they would get $500. And then from that payoff, and they still don't have enough money, then they have to move back again. If they still don't have to have enough money, they move back again. If they still don't have enough money, then they just pay what they have and the bank pays the leader the rest. So play continues like that until one or more players do a complete circuit. So they pass the finish line. Players still finish the round, then you look at the positions. Whoever traveled the farthest will move forward three spaces. Whoever traveled the second farthest moves forward two. Third farthest, although not in a three player game, so only in a four or five player game, the third place will move forward one. And last place, fourth or fifth place aren't going to move forward at all. Now, assuming the game is not over because nobody has reached the island, then two more things happen. First of all, players gain money. And the money they gain is based on the position they are compared to these parking spaces. You see, each parking space has a little ATM machine next to it and a big billboard showing an amount of money. Each player is going to be paid out for the space they're on, if they are on a space, like this one, blue's gonna be paid out a thousand, but also every space behind them up until they, you see another car. So if, I, if this is the end position of a race, then red looks between red and yellow. And there's one ATM machine, 400, red will gain $400. There are no ATM spaces between yellow and the player behind her, blue. So yellow will gain $0. Blue will gain 1000 for the space they're on. And green will get a whopping 100, 300, 500, 200. 1100 dollars and now with this newfound money players can choose to buy progress on this track so yellow is able to if uh, say starting with red red is able to uh, if red has enough money red can choose to move forward a space for two thousand dollars and if red has tons of money red can buy multiple uh, positions on the track as long as you have the money and each player has a chance to do that these spaces, you cannot reach them by paying money. That's why they have no number on them. The only way you can progress past this point is by doing well in races. So then you're going to start another race after that. Assuming that nobody has reached the island, you're going to start another race. You're going to bunch all the cars back up to the space where the player in last place is. And you're going to move the black marker there and there's gonna be a new race. This is the start and the finish. And play is going to begin with the player who finished first in the previous race. And you're going to keep doing races like that until at the end of a race, when you're progressing on this path, one or more players have reached the island. And then the player who reached the furthest on the island, who went furthest on this track, wins the game. In the case of a tie, it's the player who did the best in the previous race. That's it. You're ready to play Avanti. First things first, those vehicles that you're moving around the track are just adorable. Look at these. Aren't these adorable? They're so cute. They're easily the best pieces in a racing game I've ever encountered. Now what about the rest of the game? Pieces don't make the game. They can. They certainly help. Racing games, that's one of my favorite genres. Some of my favorite board games are racing games. Ave Caesar, uh, Mississippi Queen, Power Boats, um, probably Flam Rouge, although I haven't played it yet. Uh, it's killing me. Uh, Avanti is not one of my top tier racing games. It's not one of my favorites. Um, but it is a game that's worth having a second look at because it's so charming. If you can get past the theme, first of all, that setting makes no sense for this game. Actually, I think it's a little bit ahead of its time. I think it came out, I want to say 2010, 2011, something like that. And that theme makes no sense. But if it were to come out today, I think it could work with a um, gig economy setting. Like players are Uber drivers or DoorDash delivery people. I think that could work really well, actually. Um, so maybe it was a little bit ahead of its time that way. But I do like 
that it's not just racing. Race in your racing, of course, and the better you do in the race, the better you do at the game. That's you would want that in a racing game. But I like that there's the second consideration. There's you want to win the race, of course, but you don't want to play your cards too early. You want to hang on to some of them. So early in the race, you'll probably play your lower values a little bit more often because you don't want to lose a card too early and then have fewer choices later. So at the beginning of the race, people are kind of moving slowly, but after every round, after everyone's played a card, the player who's in the lead, they're gonna get paid by the other players. So there's also that consideration, the desire to push ahead. Um, you really, when you're playing your cards, you really need to consider what position you're in, which players are coming past you or after you uh, in turn order, uh, what space you're going to land on, whether you're able to leapfrog other players, um, and whether now is a good time to try to break for, for the lead or even break for the win um, if it's near the end of the race. So I really like those considerations. It's not just going as fast as you can. A, it's kind of balancing your slow movements versus fast movements, deciding when to push ahead, and the consideration of which spaces to land on. So it's, I really like the fact that there's these different considerations in the race. And even though the game is a bit long, that's probably my biggest knock on the game besides its nonsensical theme, um, turns mercifully are short. So everybody takes a card, puts it face down, and then in turn orders, usually starting with the player in last place, you reveal, and you're gonna move forward that many spaces, and each turn is super quick. And there's just a little pause after everyone's moved to pay out some money, and then of course you're doing the thing at the end of the race. But it's a very fast moving game. A little repetitive, um, because it's a long game, uh, but I, I do like it, I do like it a lot. It's a very unique game, but it's not one of my favorites. So this game actually, I borrowed this from the restaurant and it'll be going back into the restaurant. Um, but it is one that I wanted to highlight because it's just so charming a presentation and it does racing in a way that I haven't really seen many other games do that sort of thing. Um, I think if it was re-released now, still with charming pieces, but maybe the theme or setting tweaked a little bit, I think it could be another uh, it could have another chance at success. Uh, this is a, actually a really good game, a really good racing game. There are racing games I would usually recommend before this one, but if you happen to see it, because um, I think there's a fair number of copies out there, there's not that many ratings or comments on BGG. I don't think a lot of hobbyists have deigned to comment on it, at least in, at least in the English-speaking language. Um, but if you come across a used copy, check it out. It is a charming racing game and is still a board gem today. Thanks for watching, and remember, old games like Avanti don't stop being good just because new games come out. Take care. Avanti. 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 Avanti.